Hello, this is Siddharth Dambar from Chicago Arthritis and Regenerative Medicine, and welcome to our Wednesday webinar. Before I get started, if those of who you are currently on live, please shoot me a message to let me know whether or not you can hear me and see the screen clearly as well. Great, thank you very much. So I'll get started then. So what will you get from today's webinar? So you'll learn about the best available treatments, non-surgical treatments that are available for arthritis, tendonitis, injuries and back pain that do not require surgery. Uh, today, focusing on regenerative medicine treatments, including utilizing your own bone marrow derived stem cells or blood or platelet treatments what is legitimate in the field of regenerative medicine and really how to choose the best physicians or clinics if you need these treatments and how to avoid options that are maybe not quite as reputable. So big question, what would you do if your pain was controlled? How would your life improve? What exercises would you restart or continue? And what activities with friends and family would you participate in? Okay, so who am I? Um, I think for some of you on, uh, on the webinar currently, you already know who I am. But for those of you who do not, my name is Siddharth Dambar, physician here at Chicago Arthritis and Regenerative Medicine specialist in rheumatology, specialist also in image-guided musculoskeletal injections. I've been in practice since 2008 and involved in regenerative medicine since 2008 and also part of the Regenix Network since 2012. The Regenix Network is the largest network of affiliated physicians throughout the world who are involved in regenerative medicine, utilizing similar protocols, um, collecting data and evidence to back up what we're doing as well, and essentially doing this in a coherent and cohesive fashion. So my journey into regenerative medicine, um, I used to play quite a bit of tennis when I was younger, and um, I never really had pain when I was younger, but as I got older and continued to play, I had started to develop some pain. Uh, around that same time, I'd got, I had gotten interested in uh, diagnostic musculoskeletal ultrasound, which is a way of looking at your joints and tendons that um, give you more of a dynamic view of, um, uh, of the joint, the tendon sort of injuries, ligament kind of injuries in a way that you cannot get with x-ray or with MRI. It um, led me to get more interested in tendon and ligament injuries which then in turn got me interested eventually into regenerative medicine. So traditional care, if you have arthritis, joint issues, tendonitis or tendon tears, sprains and strains, back or neck pains, really the, the uh, traditional methods are to mask the pain and really you're essentially waiting for eventual surgery. <clears throat> this is a terrible model of care for a few reasons. Number one, incredibly not, non, um, really not very respectful to a person's actual um, pain and condition and suffering and sort of life circumstances. And number two, we don't do that for anything else. We don't do that for diabetes, for, heart, for high blood pressure. We don't wait for those kind of conditions to cause disaster scenarios. I mean, we don't wait for them to cause heart problems or, or strokes we try to treat them in advance and we should have that same approach for treating your musculoskeletal injuries and, and pain as well. So other problems with traditional care, pain medications, whether we're talking about narcotic pain medications, we're talking about anti-inflammatory medications, they don't fix the problem, they have a lot of side effects. In terms of organ side effects, uh, addictive side effects, they're really not a good solution. They're not a solution, they're just masking the pain. Traditional injections, steroid injections, 
they can give pain relief, but they have side effects in terms of too many of those injections can actually lead to damaging of the tissue, infection risk, diabetes, osteoporosis, nerve blocks, and radiofrequency ablation treatments that are done do have potential issues because they can damage the nerves and lead to muscle weakness. So there are, there are other issues there. Surgery definitely has a role for more advanced conditions, but you know, we can do better for mild to moderate conditions. For, uh, for example, surgery compared to our non-surgical options, you have higher risks, including bleeding, infection, tissue damage, anesthesia risk, cardiac risks. It can accelerate the arthritis process if, if they're doing a clean out surgery. It leads to more instability. In fact, there are routine surgeries like knee arthroscopy, if you already have arthritis, that have been shown to be no better than either sham surgery or physical therapy. And for those of us that are involved in this, we really feel that 80% of musculoskeletal conditions eventually will be able to be treated with um, needle-based procedures um, rather than surgery. In the same way that heart disease went from being a condition that was treated with open heart surgery to now 95% is treated non-surgically, either with needle-based procedures or medication. We feel like the same thing can eventually have happen with um, uh, with um, musculoskeletal conditions. By the way, as I'm going along, I see some questions being um, submitted. Please um, submit your questions. And as we're going along, I will continue to answer them. Uh, I'll probably pause every so often. Um, also, I know I'll cover a lot of the commonly asked questions as well. So in searching for better options, you know, really looking for treatments that have lower side effects, lower risk, uh, that can actually improve the cause of their problem and they're actually can give long-term improvement. So imagine reducing your pain and getting back to the activities you care about without surgery or medications. So I'll talk more about this later on, but I mean, the right approach for if you've got a musculoskeletal issue really should be figure out what's causing the problem, meaning what's driving the issue. Too often um, in medicine, we look at imaging, let's say x-rays and say, well, you've got arthritis and you're not really addressing what was the cause of that. And normally the cause is either some kind of chronic inflammation, instability, asymmetry, or neuromuscular issues. And some of these can be corrected with low risk interventions. Um, such as exercise and supplements, and if that's not enough, then escalating to stronger treatments should be pursued at that point. So regenerative medicine is, the, is essentially a medical specialty where you're using your own cells to treat arthritis, tendinitis, injuries, and back pain. So when you normally have an injury, let's say a cut to the finger, what happens is you have platelets that infiltrate the area, those platelets bring in growth factors that help to stimulate your local stem cells, which then coordinates the overall healing process. You then have inflammation, you then have a remodeling phase, and then eventually you have kind of rebuilding of tissue phase. That's a great model of care when you have good blood flow. For tissues that have poor blood flow, it can be more challenging. That includes for tendons, cartilage, ligaments, discs, labrum, or menisci. And so regenerative medicine is a process of taking those same cells, your own platelets or bone marrow derived stem cells, and then under very um, refined and highly specific image guidance, injecting them into tissues that have been damaged. So why regenerative medicine? It will treat the source of your problem, meaning you have a biologic issue, that has occurred, either damage or chronic instability or inflammation. How do you then address that? You put the right cells in to help reduce that inflammation, improve that instability, which is now actually treating the source of the problem. Safer than surgery, obviously, you're keeping your own tissue, effective for most musculoskeletal conditions. And again, 80% of traditional orthopedic surgery that's being done will eventually be managed by regenerative medicine, actually. So how does regenerative medicine work? Somebody asked a great question about, is there a cure for osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis? And these are very different conditions. Rheumatoid arthritis is a condition where your immune system is miscommunicating and basically attacking your own joints and tendons, leading to inflammation, leading to pain then. 
There isn't a cure for that. There are, however, ways to control that. Osteoarthritis is a condition where you have chronic instability in a joint or ligament, which then leads to stress on the joint, which then leads to damage in the cartilage. There's not a cure for that, but regenerative medicine does offer solutions to work on the source of the problem, meaning instability and inflammation, which will then lead to optimizing the tissue that's been damaged, which will then lead to less pain and better function. And so we know that by adding the cells that are involved in that normal healing process, that you'll actually get significant improvement in the cellular response of those cells and get you to have an improvement in pain as well as in function. Right, so we know we can actually help reduce chronic inflammation, improve instability. We can improve neuromuscular health as well by treating some of the other soft tissues around there. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But when you think about, is there a cure? There isn't really a cure for most things in medicine, except for infections. There are, however, ways to optimize your condition, optimize cells in a way that does not require amputating the joint and putting in metal or, or plastic. That, that's the right way to think about it, about there isn't a cure for all the things that happen in life. There are, however, ways that you can optimize and maximize your life. Uh, and regenerative medicine is one of those ways of doing that when it comes to your musculoskeletal health. It's a good question though. So my journey with regenerative medicine, um, you know, I, I really got interested in some of these treatments back in 2008, originally utilizing platelet-rich plasma and prolotherapy for arthritis and tendonitis. Uh, eventually started incorporating um, treatments such as bone marrow drive, con bone marrow concentrate, which has your own high concentration of stem cells, entered the Regenix network in 2012. And since that time, we've started to add on some addition additional orthobiologic or cell-based treatments to help with patients' conditions as well. So some basic, uh, other kind of uh, basics of regenerative medicine, is this legal? Uh, short answer is yes, if you're following the rules and guidelines of the FDA. So the rules, the guidelines are basically use your own cells. Cells cannot be significantly altered or adjusted, and you should be injecting them into damaged orthopedic tissue. You cannot use this for other conditions like heart problems, kidney problems, lung problems at this time. Uh, and frankly, my specialization is really just on joint issues anyway. Another common question, if I'm older, shouldn't I use someone else's cells? Answer is no, for a few reasons. Number one, the evidence out there is that, and I, the, the medical evidence that's been published is that using your own cells, there's extremely good evidence that your body still reacts very well to that. There are definitely additional risks when you use somebody else's cells. Namely, your body can react to that. It can, you can develop an allergic reaction to that. And that, uh, that's called graft versus host disease. You want to avoid that. In addition, in the United States, when it comes to using living stem cells, you can only use your own, again, with the caveat to what I mentioned before about the circumstances and what conditions you're using. The, the, the only exceptions where you can use somebody else's stem cells are when it comes to leukemia. There's really no other exception to that in this country. Is there an age limit? Again, the evidence for the vast majority of things that we treat is that there is not an age limit. The one set of exceptions would be um, hip outcomes where being older can make uh, worse outcomes. What sort of doctor should be doing these treatments? I, th I think you have to look at this in a few ways. Number one, it should be a physician focused on your musculoskeletal conditions. If your physician is doing Botox on the side, treating some other conditions and happens to also be doing these kind of treatments, they're not really a specialist in this kind of condition. You have to be focused. In medicine, you're better to be very focused and very deeply specialized as opposed to treating many different things. The, the way that how fast medicine moves is that you really cannot be an expert in too many different things. Number two, you should really be focused on non-surgical treatments for your orthopedic condition. Uh, orthopedic surgeons are great at doing surgery. That's what they're trained in. That's what they're focused on. And that's what they, that's what they practice in. It's hard for that same person to be a specialist in these other kinds of conditions in the same way that a heart surgeon is focused on heart surgery, they're not really 
an expert in doing needle-based procedures like cardiologists are, there's a, there's a difference there. And it's the same thing when it comes to these conditions. And then lastly, I'll talk about some of the things that really make a regenerative medicine expert and what that means. Um, can these treatments help if I've already had surgery? Yes, the only exceptions are if your joint has been replaced. And my general rules for orthopedic surgeries are try to keep your own anatomy as much as possible, avoid surgeries that cut out tissue, and um, always consider a regenerative medicine treatment option if you've been recommended surgery as well. So things we're gonna talk about when it comes to being a regenerative medicine expert and things you should be aware of as a patient uh, are the concept of stability, how that affects treatments, orthobiologics, meaning the kind of cell treatments that we use, and how does your doctor know that they're actually injecting the right area? So stability or prolotherapy, there's this concept in architecture called tensegrity, basically means that when you take a, um, uh, when you take a structure and there's all these different individual units, when you put them cl in close approximation and in compression, you get a stronger overall structure than the individual units would be on their own. The same concept applies in biology as well, and that's called biotensegrity. Again, the idea that if you take something like a knee joint or a shoulder joint, when you take the individual units that are weak on their own, but when you put them in close approximation and coordination, they tend to be much stronger. And this is important because this concept of prolotherapy is you're basically injecting solution into all those different structures that you see within a functional unit. And so uh, whether that's ligaments, tendons, muscles to help strengthen the supportive structures, that leads to inflammation, proliferation, remodeling, and several months down the line, you have a stronger, more stable joint, which then leads to less pain, better improvement, better function. Regenerative medicine then layers on that same concept by then using your own cells, and that's called orthobiologics, which I'll talk about in a moment. So in prolotherapy, you want to treat the layers and depth of tissue that are involved. So as an example, if you have a shoulder injury, you want to make sure that you treat not only, let's say you have shoulder arthritis, you want to make sure you treat not only the arthritis in the shoulder, you then want to also treat the ligaments that have been chronically unstable, any tendons that may be affected as well, and any other myofascial structures as well. What that does is then give you a overall stronger functional unit, which then leads to progressive strengthening and longer lasting results as well. So this is a case study of a individual that had lower back pain, a 71 year old man, uh, chronic lower back pain, he'd actually had lumbar laminectomy surgery in the past. Um, that prolotherapy concept, we ended up treating multiple areas in his case, the ligaments, the facet joints, the muscles in the epidural space, originally treating with platelet-rich plasma, which gave him a mild improvement. We ended up escalating to utilizing his own bone marrow-derived stem cells, which has now given him a significantly better response uh, that's been durable over the last few years. So keys here are, as a regenerative medicine expert and what you should be aware of is, these treatments progressively take time. They don't work fast. They will take a few months to work. In fact, there's some treatments like platelet-rich plasma and bone marrow stem cells that'll take six months plus to actually get your max benefit. But there should be a slow progressive improvement over that time. Number two, understanding that prolotherapy concept that if you have a problem, you're not only injecting into that one spot that's damaged, you wanna treat all the other surrounding tissues as well that have been affected because that's what's gonna give you a better response longer term. And then understand that multiple treatments frequently are, are required. So a great question that came through is, if you have a good response to treatment, um, uh, is, there, is there a expectation that you may, may need a repeat treatment in the future? I'm actually, I actually talk about that a little bit later on, but um, you know, there is evidence for these conditions, for treating these conditions with using regenerative medicine. And we have data that goes back to 2005. There's even data that goes back to the mid nineties. Some of that data is very long-term. What I try to get people to think a little bit more conservatively, which is that if you've had a chronic issue, then expect that a repeat treatment somewhere down the line, a few years down the line, would likely be helpful to keep that improvement going. And that's different than, let's say, you take someone that has a recent onset injury. Somebody has a recent onset injury, let's say someone that has an ACL injury. 
If you treat that immediately, that person, you can actually help to heal that initial injury and you can get a longer term outcome um, in a way that is very unique. On the other end, if you present with something like, let's say, knee arthritis, shoulder issues, back issues that you've had for you know, several years or a couple of decades, that process has, it's a lot more chronic and a lot more progressive. And so in that kind of case, you have to expect that an initial treatment will get you to a certain level. And that certain level might be exactly where you want to be, maybe a little bit below where you want to be. But you may need a second treatment or third treatment in the future. That may be a year from that, from that treatment. That may be five, seven years from that time. It's going to vary from person to person. But the evidence that we have shows that there is a stair-step effect for people who get treated, namely that there's a slow progressive response for people that gets them to a higher level. And what I normally recommend is if you start to have a dip down, then get a second treatment. And what we know from evidence is that that second treatment will then get you to a higher level again, to, to a higher step. And so what's nice about these treatments is that because you're really treating what is the source of the problem, that you get a longer lasting result as well. But that, that was actually a good question. So orthobiologics. Orthobiologics are the biologic cells and tissues that we inject into your damaged orthopedic tissue. So again, it uses that normal healing process. Again, in a normal injury, you have platelets that come in, they bring in growth factors, stimulate other cells, including your own local mesenchymal stem cells. And that's what creates that normal process. So we're trying to get that same effect into your own body as well. Use your own cells, not somebody else's. Your body is made to handle your own cells. So stick with that. That's where the evidence is. Platelets are really the first line treatments that we use when it comes to orthobiologics. Um, again, platelets work, work because of the growth factors. They work by causing that focal inflammation to help that normal tissue repair process. And they also stimulate your own local stem cells. The way that you get platelets is that you do a blood draw. Take anywhere from five to 30 tubes of blood, depending on the nature of your condition. Uh, it varies because um, uh, there should never be a one-size-fits-all process, namely because your injury and your issue is going to be different than somebody else's. And based on what your injury is, you want to take a different type of blood draw and create a different type of product. So if you have a um, arthritic shoulder or knee, you want to take a very high concentration of platelets. On the other hand, if you have more of a rotator cuff or ligament injury, you then want to use a lower concentration of platelets that's less inflammatory. The picture on the right shows um, two different types of platelet preparations. The one on the right has a lot of red blood cells. The one on the left has no red blood cells. The one without red blood cells is that yellow or amber color. That's what you want to use preferentially because um, that's what's less inflammatory and more concentrated platelets. Again, understanding that most physicians are not, they don't have that flexibility of choosing different types of platelet preparations because they're not using a lab kind of method. If you do, that'll give you a better result. And again, when it comes to platelet-rich plasma, higher concentration tends to be better for joints and tendons and ligaments, but it is more inflammatory. Platelet lysate is another type of a platelet product that we create that's less inflammatory. You just basically take your platelets, crack, crack, crack them open and take the growth factors from that. We'll use that for nerves and it's less inflammatory. So this is a nice example of a gentleman that uh, came to me, 45 year old man, cyclist. Uh, he had a lot of knee pain, um, had seen a sports medicine doctor, had tried physical therapy, was not really getting adequately better. He ended up getting a, uh, ended up coming referred to me where we diagnosed him with patellar tendonitis. Uh, not only his MRI, this, this picture on the right, this is uh, the patellar tendon. That's the kneecap, this white structure. And these little um, structures right here, th those are um, uh, uh, basically um, uh, tendonitis within the tendon. Um, so the treatment that we did in his case was platelet-rich plasma. Picture on the left, or excuse me, the picture on the right 
is a um, uh, under ultrasound, um, putting that needle into the patellar tendon very precisely and injecting a high concentration of his own platelets into there. Um, uh, he required two treatments and he's done great. He's back to full capacity. I saw him three years later. Now his other leg, he had uh, hamstring tendonitis, again had PRP treatment and had a good response again. What's nice about that example is Number one, um, uh, helpful to understand um, uh, that there's differences in um, the kind of platelet preparation that we use, and your physician should be aware of that. And number two, repeating treatment gives that better stair step response. And, and this is a gentleman that had a great example of that. Okay, uh, the next type of orthobiologic treatment are stem cells. It is the main cell that drives tissue repair and recovery after an injury. Again, use your own cells, not somebody else's. The only one that's compliant with FDA guidance in the United States is your own bone marrow drive stem cells. That's what's legal in the US. Fat or adipose stem cells have been used in the past, but because of the enzyme that's required to break them apart, um, that is not considered legal in the United States. The FDA has concerns that that enzyme is not safe for humans. You can use adipose or fat for structural support, and we will use that as an adjunct to some of our treatments as well. Umbilical cord or amniotic cells, you may have heard about these. Um, uh, multiple organizations have looked at this. There's no living cells in that. The way that these, that these cells are procured is that you have a... Um, after birth, they basically collect the amniotic or umbilical cord cells. A company takes them and processes them. They process it by essentially digesting it with an enzymatic process, creating a powdered kind of material out of it, uh, gamma rating it to kill off any kind of cells in it. They then put that into a um, uh, glass vial and ship that to the doctor's office. That can sit on the doctor's shelf for up to two years and then can be reused. To reuse it, you have to put water back into it, rehydrate it, and then re-inject it. In that process, there's no living cells by the time it's injected. There are some growth factors that can be helpful. It can be an adjunctive treatment, but there's no living cells. So it's not actually a stem cell treatment. Um, IV stem cells, no proven benefit for orthopedic conditions. I would avoid that as well. So stem cell treatment outcomes. Um, number one, our, our outcomes, even if you have advanced issues, are to really improve pain and function, improve stability, improve inflammation, get your cells to start working better, uh, improve exercise tolerance, just improve quality of life more than anything else. Can we improve x-ray and MRI images? If you have advanced arthritis, unlikely. Um, and again, that's because if you've had something that's been chronic for decades, it's just not reasonable to say, can we reverse that? But we still can help in terms of pain and function and getting you to have a better quality of life. For tendon tears, as long as your tear is less than two centimeters, we can actually improve that on imaging. I'll show an example of that. Ligament tear is the same thing. If you have bone swelling in arthritic joint or bone swelling from avascular necrosis, these can be very damaging and painful issues. We can actually um, reverse what that looks like on MRI and also improve your functions. Can we treat bone on bone arthritis? Bone on bone arthritis is a terrible term that a lot of doctors use. Because if you truly have bone on bone, you wouldn't be able to even move the joint through a range of motion. And what I find frequently is an x-ray report for knee that a physician has described as bone on bone, and yet the patient themselves still has good range of motion. And so if you have advanced arthritis, that can still be treated. And in particular, if your range of motion is still close to normal, that can still be treated. There's some caveats to that for for more advanced arthritis. Hip osteoarthritis is an exception to all of this. Um, but if you take any other example, any other area, as long as your expectations are improving pain and function, absolutely, that's still very likely. Improving imaging, however, is unlikely in those cases. So this is a case where um, we actually treated somebody's ligament injury, an ACL injury in the knee. Um, I'd mentioned that you can treat partial thickness tears there's some cases where you can actually treat full thickness tears. And this is an example of that. So this is a 28 year old man, a younger man, ACL injury, um, uh, he is a butcher, but he happened to be playing recreational volleyball and he injured his uh, knee ACL. Uh, I saw him relatively soon after his injury. 
two months later, and we had done bone marrow aspirate, uh, concentrate stem cell treatment. Within three months, he had no pain, was restarting dynamic activity, uh, and he had a really dramatic looking improvement in his um, uh, imaging as well, which I'll show. The picture on the right, this is uh, the knee, this is a kneecap, this is a thigh bone, this is a shin bone, this is a needle that's coming into the knee, and what's being lit up here is the ACL. We know we're in the ACL correctly here because there is some contrast in the, in the uh, ligament itself. That's how we confirmed that. And um, that's how he got such a great result, which I'll show right here. So this is his, um, these are his MRIs. And um, I, I just made this whole point that some things cannot improve with imaging, but they can still improve in terms of symptoms. This is a case where imaging improved dramatically. Image on the left is right after his injury. This is his ACL. This is the bottom of the ACL. That's the top of the ACL. It's very hazy, very hard to make out, very blurry. The radiologist described this as a full thickness tear without retraction. Um, the image on the right, on the other hand, is post-treatment MRI. Uh, and again, now you have a very linear and clear-cut structure. Here is a great example of where somebody's um, uh, not somebody that had not only a great result in terms of pain and function, but a great result in terms of imaging. A great example of where if you can catch an injury at an early stage, you can get phenomenal um, uh, imaging results as well. It's an example of someone um, who had a chronic rotator cuff injury, actually. So um, uh, this is a 57-year-old man contractor, he does a lot of overhead work, who uh, came to me with a rotator cuff tear. These images are ultrasound images. The ones on the left are before treatment. Um, uh, this, where I put the arrow right there, there's a gap here. You see this black area. That is a rotator cuff tear. On the bottom picture, see it even better. The, the, one, the, the arrow on the left is where the rotator cuff tear is, and the arrow on the right is where uh, the tendon is still attached. So he has a full thickness tear. Uh, it's, it's pulled back by about a centimeter. So that's still treatable. This is three months after a great functional and pain relief improvement standpoint. Um, this is what that rotator cuff looks like now on the right side. You now have a filling in of where that tear was. So that, that is a really nice looking um, imaging result. Uh, obviously more importantly is he's had a great um, um, human result in terms of pain and function. He's back to working, exercising, and, and really doing well. So I think keys for you to understand are what is legally compliant with stem cell treatments in this country, how to utilize all of the stem cell treatments available in a safe and honest manner, and giving very realistic um, expectations and results. So interventional orthopedics, it's this idea of using image guidance to treat orthopedic injuries. So I have colleagues who talk about how they can inject anything in the body in terms of musculoskeletal system, um, just based on palpating and feeling the skin because of their experience. In my personal experience, that is, um, that's nonsense. And the reason why is when you're trying to inject areas that are less than one millimeter in, um, in length and width, um, you, you can't do that blindly. You need to use ultrasound and x-ray guidance. Um, these are some examples of that. Um, uh, the picture on the left is of a um, rotator cuff, um, uh, rotator cuff uh, injection where we're injecting um, literally at a submillimeter level. Uh, again, there's a needle, there's a tendon, and, and that's injecting in a very small area. Picture on the right is of a, another shoulder um, injection. Um, uh, this is the um, um, this is the shoulder joint. Um, uh, the the needle is going into the joint. You see a little bit of black um, uh, highlighting within the joint. That's how we know we're hitting the right structure. In this individual's case, case you'll also see a triangular structure here. We actually injected his labral tear as well. Uh, very hard structure to inject if you're not using X-ray guidance. So. Image guidance is key for all these kind of treatments because if you're off in terms of where you're injecting, you're not going to get a good result. Again, the, these were those prior images as well where we were injecting on the left into the patellar tendon 
and on the right into the ACL, both really properly requiring high level image guidance. This is a case study of a 41 year old man. He's a chef, stands on his feet all day long. He came to me with really significant ankle pain. Um, what he has is a little bit of osteoarthritis, early arthritis, but what he really has is avascular necrosis. So what's exciting about um, medicine in general, but definitely regenerative medicine is the field is moving fast in terms of our understanding. And what we find is that in something like, um, uh, in cases where you have early arthritis and the bone is swollen as well. And the picture on the left is a great example of this. This is an image of an ankle joint where I have, this, where I have the arrow right now, they're swelling the bone. That is consistent in his case with avascular necrosis. What that means is that the blood flow is being inhibited into the bone, which will eventually lead to more damage in the joint. If we leave that alone, he will eventually lead to really destructive bad arthritis in the ankle and eventually requiring ankle replacement. In his case, on the other hand, we actually injected his own bone marrow concentrate, which has, which has a high concentration of his own stem cells. We injected that into the joint and into the bone. By injecting into the bone, what he ends up with, and this is his image three months later, not only a great pain relief standpoint, he's, he's actually now four years out, pain is 95% better, but you know, the bone, this is the arrow on the right side now, that, that swelling the bone has totally evaporated. Like he's no longer having that active process. So we've treated not only his pain and his, and his function, improved those, but we actually treated the source of his problems as well which has now led to a dramatic improvement in um, uh, not only his current condition, but his future expectations of what can happen with his ankle. So again, I think if you're doing these kind of treatments, you have to be using a high level of image guidance. Um, and the reason why is because if you're off by even like a millimeter, you're not gonna get the right result. You're not in the right tissue. Uh, another part of this is you have to be committed to doing this properly. And that means constantly improving your technical skills, tracking your results in a, in a proper registry so you can properly tell people what to expect from treatment and what makes someone a good or bad candidate. Um, th those are the kind of things to do professionally in, in this kind of field. If your physician's off base and with any of that, you're not going to get the right kind of treatment. Regenerative medicine treatments offer safe and effective solutions for your pain. Great, so good question that came through. Um, uh, I'm gonna actually answer that in a moment. Um, uh, are these, are these are, are, are what we're talking about here too good to be true? So, you know, I have colleagues, like I saw a patient recently who's coming to me for elbow tendonitis. We're gonna end up using platelet rich plasma for that. And he had said that his orthopedic surgeon had told him, you know, these treatments are a little bit too new they're low risk, you have nothing to lose, but they're too new, I'm not sure if it's gonna help. And it's interesting because he asked me, where's the evidence that these treatments can help? And in his case for elbow tendonitis, I said, well, let me refer you to an article from 2006. 2006, it's, 2000, it's almost 2022. And I'm referring him to an article from 2006 and he was surprised and he said, well, is there anything more recent? And I told him, well, of course, there's things more recent, but this is the definitive article that showed that platelet-rich plasma works for elbow tendonitis. That's how long it's been around. To say that it's too new to give you an expected result is inaccurate. It's too new if you're not an expert in it. So the evidence really goes back even before that. So in the Regenics Network, we've been collecting data since 2005. Philip Hernigue is an orthopedic surgeon in France. He has data for... Um, shoulder and knee treatments, where he's actually compared his patients that one side had, had surgery, traditional surgery, and the other side had bone marrow stem cell treatment. And he's tracked that for 30 years now. And so there's data that goes back quite a long ways. So while, these, while the field is relatively new and rapidly developing, it's not brand new. There's data, there's good data, actually, especially for the last 10 to 15 years. And while my personal experience goes back to 2008, there's data that goes back before that. There are right and wrong ways to do this. Absolutely, you need to have expectations grounded in reality, evidence-based medicine. So you're not getting you know, painted sort of a pie in the sky um, expectation, but um, absolutely um, uh, not good too good to be true. And absolutely, 
um, uh, you should expect um, results. How long do results last? So Regenix has data that goes 10 plus years. Philip Hernigue, France has data that goes out to over 20 years. Again, what I tell people is be conservative in your expectations uh, and let's try to do better than those expectations. So for a chronic condition, expect that you'll need a repeat treatment at some point, um, possibly a few years down the line. I think that is appropriate and conservative. The best ways to maintain your results after treatment, improve your biomechanics, either with physical therapy or a trainer, take all the appropriate supplements that we know that are helpful for joint health. And again, if you need a repeat treatment down the line, understand that it's additive and will give you a better result long-term as well. Cost. So great question. Someone uh, had just asked me a question about cost. Uh, treated him um, a few years ago, several years ago, and asking, um, uh, having some uh, other issues now, wanting to know about insurance coverage. Um, here's kind of the, the simple answer. Traditional insurance does not cover this currently, unfortunately. Um, there are some cover, um, insurances that do cover. Uh, as an example, if you have um, pretty much every large company is self-insured, meaning they can decide what they cover and don't cover. They don't leave it up to um, commercial insurance to decide that. Um, in those cases, they have the option of adding these kind of treatments to their benefits plan. So for example, Regenix Corporate, if you go to regenixcorporate.com, they have people that can help guide your company through that process. It takes time realistically, because you need to talk through uh, HR and benefits administrative uh, people in terms of how to add this to the benefits plan. But there are, um, uh, I think there, I think there's like around 100 companies already in the country that currently now, now have this attached to their benefits plan. Um, uh, for regular insurance, currently, traditionally, no, you do find some workers comp insurances that offer this or, or that cover this. Um, Medicare does not currently cover um, um, TRICARE, which is the um, uh, government insurance for active duty, duty military um, uh, personnel, does cover in some cases platelets for knees and elbows, but not for everything. Um, so slowly changing, but currently still not covered. Cost estimates in the U.S. to start um, prolotherapy about 650, PRP about 1500 stem cells, typically 7500 to 8000 plus. Um, keys to determine value. Um, number one, is your physician and clinic a regenerative medicine expert? Are they focused? Do they know what they're doing? Are you getting a real stem cell treatment or something that's been miscategorized? Um, uh, are you getting um, reasonable expectations? Um, are you being um, um, treated by a professional? That, that's what I would say. Um, these are in-office procedures. So you don't need to get these done in the hospital or a surgery center. Typically, when you get something done in a hospital or surgery center, there are additional facility fees that they're either billing to you directly or to your insurance. Um, uh, you don't really require that. This can be done in the office directly. Let's see a couple more questions and I'll continue to get to those. Um, right, so again, I, I think the biggest keys here are, number one, make sure you have a good handle for what's going on. Make sure your physician has a good handle for what's the source of your problem, how to treat that when it comes to inflammation, instability, asymmetry, neuromuscular issues. Make sure you've tried some low-risk interventions first, supplements, exercises, activity modification. If it's not enough, then make sure you're working with a regenerative medicine expert for these kind of treatments to get the best option for your, for your, for your own injury that's personalized for what your issue is, and it's being delivered in a manner that is at 100% professional level. Okay, a couple other questions I'll get to here. Um, somebody asking about, um, they have a lot of arthritis in their knee. They've been told they have no more college or no more cartilage or collagen in their knee. Can this treatment help or improve your ability to walk without pain? Yeah, that, that is a wonderful question. So. Probably the most common condition that we treat is knee arthritis with these kind of conditions. And that's in large part because um, we all have knees and um, uh, we walk on two feet, uh, two legs, and we put a lot of stress in our knees. Knees are amazing because they can handle a phenomenal amount of stress. And what I find is that even when you see someone that has imaging, x-rays, MRIs, CAT scan that show 
advance arthritis, where they're being told that uh, that uh, cartilage is gone. You've got again, quote unquote, bone on bone arthritis. That those people can still respond very well to treatment. And I think in large part that's because our knees are made to handle a lot of stress. And so even when you find that somebody has advanced arthritis, the range of motion is still full and intact in the knee um, or, or close to it. They still respond very well. So absolutely, I think. A lot of this is sort of going through and talking out, you know, like what is your expectation and goals of treatment? If your expectations are, can you walk with less pain and have a better quality of life? Um, can you have 70% plus um, improvement in pain and function? Absolutely. Um, even if you have advanced knee arthritis, that can happen. Um, uh, if your expectations are, um, you haven't done any exercise in five years, can you run a marathon in three months? That's gonna be hard, right? But, you know, can you start to do more progressive physical activity? Can you walk a bit more? Can you do a bit more exercise? Can you improve the strength in your legs because you have less knee pain? Those things are very doable and, and practical. So absolutely. Wonderful. I think other keys that you should have when it comes to your care for these kind of issues um, um, make sure your physician is completely aligned with your own, um, I think, expectations and beliefs. Uh, I think that should include um, integrity, respectful and collaborative care. You should be involved in your decision making, know exactly what you're getting into. Transparency when it comes to candidacy for treatment, transparency when it comes to the cost of treatment, um, getting the best available option, not sort of the most convenient option, which unfortunately happens in a lot of healthcare, and really doing what's right for the patient. The same treatment you are getting should be the same one that your physician treats themselves with or that they're offering to their parents, their spouse, their friends. It should be the exact same level of care. If it's not, you know, that, that's not someone you want to work with. Wonderful. If you're asking how to get evaluated, a couple different ways. Um, uh, essentially, the fastest way is go to chicagoarthritis.com. You can either call us or you can just email us. Email us sometimes more fast. Um, uh, and we are here to help. If you have questions, um, feel free to message us anytime. Again, we're here to help uh, educate and help in any way possible um, because these treatments are newer uh, and people do have questions. As I'm wrapping up here, any other questions before I log off? Okay, wonderful. Well, I appreciate everyone's time. Um, uh, you'll have a chance to watch this on replay if interested. And if we can be helpful in any other way, please let us know. And until we connect again, I hope everyone has a good day and live well. Thank you. Bye-bye.